Of course, we know what causes autoimmune diseases and what causes um, food allergies. Of course we do. Uh, I find it surprising that many of the medical groups say that we're not sure. I think what they really mean to say is, is that they aren't exactly sure how all the mechanisms of action work. Hell, I don't either. But, but the, the cause for autoimmune diseases and for food allergies is a, uh, uh, what's called regulatory T cell uh, dysfunction or regulatory T cell uh, suppression, meaning you're not getting enough regulatory T cells, okay? So when a person, so, so regulatory T cells called TREGs, I'm gonna call them TREGs. So TREGs manage the immune system. They balance it. They 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 provide uh, basically uh, immune suppression uh, work, right? So they help keep everything level. And so what happens is is when you have a regulatory T cell or Treg dysfunction, the immune system run amok, runs amok. Okay. And when you don't have enough uh, regulatory T cells, your immune system goes batshit crazy. So if you look at all the new therapies that people are trying to work on to develop uh, for autoimmune diseases. Uh, you will find that they are hyper focused on uh, uh, regulatory T cell production. Okay, so what do we know causes this regulatory T cell dysfunction or regulatory regulatory uh, uh, T cell uh, suppression? Let's call it that. Okay, well we know that dysbiosis or gut imbalances uh, absolutely causes uh, Treg suppression. Treg uh, causes Treg. Uh, suppression and in, in, in production of tregs, it causes a dysfunction of tregs. We know that. So does your gut, uh, so, so, so does the gut, uh, does, do gut imbalances cause autoimmune issues? Yeah, it does, there's no question. Uh, at least not from my perspective. Now, people will say, well, I have, I have, um, I have this genetic disposition and they, and, or genetic, yeah, I have the genetics for this, that, or the other. And that's true. I don't disagree that. I don't discount that. But what really throws them over the, like, like what really breaches the, or really causes the problem, it causes the dam to break, is people have uh, imbalances and those imbalances sort of push things over and it causes a, it causes a dysfunction of regulatory T cells, okay, or a suppression of them, okay. So given that, why, why do you think that it would be very, very important to clean up the gut? Well, because uh, in th it, by doing so, you might suggest that that would help restore uh, regulatory T cell function. And it would also hopefully induce, which we pretty sure it does, induce regulatory T cell production, okay? so. So what you want to do if you, from a gut health perspective, what you're trying to do is you want to do a thorough cleanup of the gut and then a buildup. Now, let me give an example of why. I'll give two examples, me and Tiffany. So my wife has Hashimoto's disease and we don't, when she, years ago when she, with her Hashimoto's disease, I don't remember her having gut problems, okay? I, I don't remember that. I remember her when she'd brush her hair at night or in the morning or whatever. I remember a lot of hair coming out. I remember her complaining all the time that she felt like she was just losing tons of hair. I remember her having joint pain. I remember uh, not, her not feeling well and moody and stuff like that. I remember all that. I don't remember gut problems, okay? So in Tiffany's situation, Tiffany started from that place, okay? So she didn't have constipation, reflux, heartburn, gastritis. She didn't have any of that stuff. She just had bad Hashimoto's, okay? So what did we do? We went super aggressive on a cleanup. I mean, we loaded her up on immunoglobulins for several months. And then after that, which by the way, the first thing she noticed is her brain fog went away. She felt really good after the cleanup. Where things really took off for Tiffany is in the gut buildup process. That's really where she got over the hump. And what does that mean? Well, the if you're doing an aggressive gut buildup, you should be really, really hyper-focused on increasing short-chain fatty acids. So if you ever see any gut company, uh, of course not us, but gut companies or people that are talking about gut health and they're like short-chain fatty acids are like super important. Well, they are super important for a lot of reasons. Uh, they control the metabolism, uh, they're super key to the gut barrier. I mean, they are very, very, very important for gut barrier integrity. And guess what? They also are what, uh, they are a significant, they have a significant impact on regulatory T cell production. They do. They're, they, 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 they are a huge uh, player in that. So Tiffany 
so it would make sense. Why, why would Tiffany go from having all those problems to feeling better through the process? Well, well, dysbiosis is connected to regulatory T cell dysfunction and suppression, and she significantly boosted her, her uh, short chain fatty acids in the buildup process. Now what Tiffany does is she maintains. Um, she maintains, she does great. Her hair grows, she lives a normal life. Now she does take hair complex, so that's, let's be honest, that's true. Um, but that's what happened. So, so, uh, so does that work? Well, from our experience, of course, I mean, from our, from our experience, we would say, yeah, that process works because it worked for my wife. Now let's take me. I had food allergies, bad food allergies. Um, meaning I would eat certain foods and my mouth would get super itchy and scratchy and my throat would start to swell shut. I'd have all sorts of allergic reactions. I'd feel like I want, I literally most of the time I'd want to take a wire brush and just run it down my mouth and throat. It, it was super uncomfortable. So I avoided those foods. What I found personally when I got, so I did a cleanup, not as aggressive as Tiffany's, but I did a cleanup and then I did a buildup. And about after eight, nine months of a buildup, what I found is I started reintroducing foods again that I had allergies to. Now, I'm not going to tell you, I can't tell you to do that. I'm, gonna, I'm telling you what I did. And I started introducing those foods again and I've done great. I ate bananas, walnuts, uh, carrots, watermelon. I, 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 I have bananas every morning with my smoothie my morning smoothie. I, I, I don't have those issues anymore. So is my experience that the process works for that? Yeah. Next, uh, there are, if you were to go research, certain vitamins and, and whatnot that improve immune tolerance. If you ever see us talk about immune tolerance, what we're actually trying to say is this helps with autoimmune diseases and food allergies, okay? It's called immune tolerance. So vitamin K2 and D3 absolutely help with um, uh, immunosuppression. They help with uh, regulatory T cell production, okay? So that's, that's literally what's going on. Okay, now last, uh, what is Silver Fern brand doing to be more uh, responsive and helpful to those of you with autoimmune diseases and food allergies? Acacia and our science team right now is actively, very actively working to develop a product for immune tolerance. Um, which means we are hyper focused on just like all the other all the drug companies and everybody else trying to help with autoimmune issues. We are hyper focused on helping increase regulatory T cell production. But even when that product comes out and we're like, this is really good for regulatory T cell production, um, you still you still need to correct the underlying problem. So should you aggressive should you do an aggressive gut cleanup? Hell yeah, like yes. Should you focus a lot on taking probiotics and prebiotics that have been shown clinically to significantly boost short chain fatty acids? I would, I mean, we do that for Tiffany, hell, I do it every day. I pair certain probiotics with prebiotics every day. I load up on them. I don't eat, I mean, that's how I, that's how I feel good. I, I, there's a lot of reasons to do it. Um, uh, metabolism, nutrient absorption, gut barrier integrity, but but for people like my wife, who has Hashimoto's, it's what she does to keep her Hashimoto's in check. Okay, and and for those of you with that are considering, you know, hypothetically, of course, taking a K two D three supplement, if you have autoimmune diseases, you may want to take or or for that matter, food allergies, you may want to consider taking a higher dose of that. You may want to take a higher dose. You may want, at least to begin with, especially, you may want to take, you know, two or three thousand IU's of vitamin D a day, and the, obviously the K2 is super helpful f for a million reasons, but, and that also increases regulatory T cell production. Oh, but that's the combination. That's what we do. I hope this helps. Uh, just know we are really, really focused on helping with autoimmune diseases. We will never be able to say that, uh, but we are working actively to come up with a, uh, a more aggressive product for immune tolerance. I hope this helps. Bye.